All right, welcome everybody to hopefully our last day of fallacies. Maybe we have one more, and then we're gonna pop back into social issues in computer science. And I uh, hope you like the music of uh, Meiko Kaji. She's a really good Inca singer. All right, so uh, how did you do on the quiz? Take a look. You can understand Japanese but have a potato memory. So you're just saying that we should just trust you on this? <laughs> Ipsy Dixit. Alright, let's take a look. So the uh, Laden talk, uh, a lot of people had trouble getting in to the, uh, the link on it. So I've updated it. Uh, I've posted the recording of it, and so you can watch the recording. And you got a week to watch it and write an essay on it to get some points on your quizzes if you don't like your your quiz score right now. Lots and lots of extra credit in this class. Then there will be an extra credit on Friday as well by a friend of mine from the SCA Society of creative anachronism, historical reenactment kind of stuff. And that will be Friday at four o'clock here. All right, so. Will there be an scratch extra credit? Um, all, all the, or at least the last scratch assignment had kind of extra credit built into it. Uh, if you did more than was required for the maze assignment, then I awarded max credit on that. Okay, uh, match the same what fallacy they're making. Okay, sure, Ronda Rousey was a judo player who did well in the UFC, but you know what I mean. Most judo players in the UFC suck. So this is um, moving goalposts, right? So uh, when you when you revise your original argument without acknowledging that you were wrong, that's moving goalposts. You, you run away from opposing evidence. No, 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 that's not what I claimed originally, because if I claimed that originally, I'd be wrong. So, let's move the, move the goalposts out of the way. Okay, so Vern Buchanan is a Republican that supports gun control. That makes him a rhino. So, these two are very similar, right? So, in this case, what happened is the person changed the original claim. So, they made a claim that uh, judo players in the UFC suck. And when provided evidence of somebody who did not suck, Ronda Rousey, who was eh, arguably the third or fourth best uh, female um, fighter in the UFC of all time, um, the person just changed the claim. For this one, for this one, it's similar, right? Uh, they they were. Uh, again, provided evidence that their their claim was wrong, but the reaction to it changes whether it's a moving goalposts or if it's a no true Scotsman. With moving goalposts, you move your goalposts out of the way of the incoming evidence. The incoming evidence, is like oh here's Ronda Rousey, and you move your goalposts. No, 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 you know, you know, I, I didn't. Obviously, Ronda Rousey is a good player, but you know. And so with this one. What you do is you instead impeach the the incoming evidence, saying it's not a true X. So if you say that uh, uh, all you know all Republicans are opposed to gun control, and a person says, well, you know, Vernon Buchanan is Republican who supports gun control, and you're like, if it was moving goalposts, you'd be like, well, obviously, most Republicans, not all, you know, that'd be moving goalposts. In this case, what they're doing is they're saying, well, that makes Vernon Buchanan not a real Republican. And so that's no true Scotsman. That's the difference. They're similar, but the reaction to the incoming oppositional data is is the difference. In one case, you move your claim out of the way. In the other, you say that incoming evidence, that person's not a true Republican in this case. Yeah. I've met three people from a country America, and they're all rude, so you're rude. That's a false generalization or a hasty generalization. Uh, which is when you make a generalization uh, too early uh, with insufficient evidence. You've not done the stats on the on the matter. Okay. Um, the 
uh, Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone shows why Democrats can't be trusted to run a country. Um, you're you're cherry picking a single example, and it, it is a form of uh, false generalization. So the the twelve view that put down hasty generalization, um, it, it is it is technically um, a hasty generalization as well. But in this case, we're selecting the worst example, right? So if you um, ever get into any political debate with anybody, not talking even about politicians, but I just mean in real life, you know, or Twitter, which may or may not be real life, or Facebook, which may or may not be real life, you will see that when people are trying to make a point, they, they cherry pick all the time the worst example of their opponent's position, you know? And so they, it's not like they're, they're like looking at like, I don't know, like San Diego, which currently has a democratic mayor, right? And San Diego's run fine, I guess. Uh, they pick the worst example in this case, uh, you know, the Capitol Hill autonomous zone, right? And, uh, this is also the example that I gave in lecture. So yeah. there's that too. Do you guys understand? So it, it is, it is a form of hasty generalization. And on a midterm or something like that, I would not have these two on the same option. Okay. But I figured this was fair because it was literally in the in the lecture as my example for cherry picking. So. Okay. So these two are similar, but these are actually di discernible. These are discernibly different. In this case, you move your claim. In this case, you say the incoming evidence is not a true whatever true Scotsman, not a true Republican, whatever. Uh, for this one, uh, they're forming a, um, and, and people that said cherry picking, you know, probably, probably on the right target, except in this case, they're not actually cherry picking. <laughs> so this one, the cherry picking is, is wrong. Why? Because it's not like the person selected the worst example of Americans. Well, um, who would be an example of a rude American? Can anyone think of a rude American? So cherry picking is specifically the worst. Yeah, cherry picking is when you uh, select uh, very specifically an example to make your point. Uh, in this case, they just have met three people from America. You know, they're not selecting, um, you know, a, a case. A hasty Twitter user. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're like, um, that was a rude American. Um, I don't know. I can't come up with any examples off the, off the top of my head, ironically enough. But, you know, if, if you're like, look, uh, look at this American, your next door neighbor. My next door neighbors are, are nice people, actually. They're actually really nice. Um, so, vegan lady, I don't know who that is. Uh, maybe like Megan Fox or something like that. You know, I, I, I don't know, I've never met her, so. Um, yeah, look, you know, that's how terrible Americans are, you know, because I heard that she was rude to people on the set of Transformers. So, I don't know, okay. That would be cherry picking. In this case, they didn't cherry pick anything. Just, they formed a generalization from a very small data set. Okay. Well, I would like to support peace talks because I work for a military contractor to put me out of work. So I will oppose you. I will not sign your petition for peace. That's obviously an appeal to consequences. You know, it has nothing to do with the actual issue. It's just like it would be bad for me. So yeah, I'm opposed to that. Okay. All right. So uh, overall, you did pretty well. And, and the things you got wrong are, are, are fair to, to have gone wrong. It was when I made that, I was like, mm, should I do that? Should I do them? Eh, mm. they're, they're, they got two extra credits this week. There's two extra credits this week. So I, I felt a little bit okay um, giving you giving you one that was a little bit tricky. Normally, on, on like a midterm, I, I wouldn't do. I wouldn't do you guys like that. <laughs> on a midterm, there would not be cherry picking and hasty generalization. Or new true Scotsman and moving goalposts together. Normally, I pick ones that are quite different. Okay. 
Uh, hi, hi guys. Sorry, what, I'm, what are we doing? We're going over the quiz. Okay. So yeah, there, there's there's four points of extra credit available. This was a one point quiz. So all four of those, all five of those questions together were a single point. So I, and I did that deliberately. Normally, if I do something like that, I make it equal to the number of things to match. But I was like, eh, I know what I'm doing. Okay. Um, so we've talked about non sequitur before. And red herring is kind of the same thing as a non sequitur. Okay. So a non sequitur is just when the logic doesn't work. And so this is a very broad category, kind of like false generalization is a broad category. Non sequitur is a broad category. Um, all of the, um, you know, the, the affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent. All of those are non sequiturs. Why? Because the logic doesn't work. Non sequitur is when the logic in an argument doesn't work. The premises don't connect to the conclusion. Those are all non sequiturs. Okay. So uh, a red herring is a form of non sequitur in which you do it deliberately. How about that? Okay. And I'm in, in these slides, I'm going to ask you to try and figure out if it's red herring or non sequitur. But on a midterm, I'm not going to make you guess if the person was deliberately, you know, sort of, uh, you know, not having the logic work. Because, you know, you, you can't tell that from a midterm, you know. Very, very commonly used in politics, by the way. Very common in politics. If implemented, your plan will... This is an actual quote, by the way. If implemented, your plan will cost $10 trillion. How do you plan to pay for it? Response. Well... That's just a Republican talking point. What's the connection between these two things? What's the connection? It Sure. And in fact, it very well might be. You know, it might very well be a Republican talking point. Remember how we had those quiz questions where the premises were true and the conclusion was true and it was still an invalid argument. And it was invalid because there's no connection between the premises and the conclusion. Why is this a non sequitur? Why? Why is it a non sequitur? And, and people in debates do this all the time. They won't answer hard questions because it makes them look bad. So they deflect. They distract. They change the topic. You didn't, yeah, they didn't really answer the question. The question was, how are you going to pay for your $10 trillion plan? And they don't want to answer that because if they answered it, it would have to be like, we're going to raise taxes to 50%, you know, for everyone or something like that. Right. And, um, and people don't want to hear that. You know, people would be like, Hmm, I don't know. That sounds like, yeah, that sounds like a really high tax rate, you know? And so they don't want to admit to something that'll make them sound bad. And so they deflect and they change the topic. Um, that's cool and I'll be avoiding the question yeah exactly so so picked on Democrats so let's pick on Republican abstinence only sex education has been shown to be less effective at stopping teen pregnancies than comprehensive sex education true as far as I can tell truthfully uh, so if you don't want teens to be pregnant why do you support abstinence only education politician to you I think one of the fundamental values in America is freedom and the holy bond between a parent and their child. Get the government out of our bodies. Woo! You know. And so, in this case, uh, <laughs> up here it's a deflection. Right? In this case, um, yeah, it, it's a deflection, but also a um, pandering to the audience. Right? So, uh, I think that uh, I think that sex ed should be between a parent and their, and their kid. And... Yeah, you know, again, not answering the question, right? Not answering the question. Like, did not address the diff the disparity between comprehensive sex ed and abstinence-only sex ed, right? So, oops. Wild applause. Moving on. <laughs> right? And if you're the moderator, you kind of just be like, could you please answer the question? Please tell me how you're going to pay for your program, you know? So, 
a red herring is when it's a deliberate attempt to change the topic. Yeah. Or a deliberate attempt to distract. A non sequitur would be uh, more accidental. So like I said, on a, on a midterm, I'm not going to make you try to guess whether it was accidental or deliberate. Okay, so there's actually a, uh, a game called The Contender that I played at Gen Con a few years back. And you have to, basically that's, that's the entire, the entire game is like answering tough questions without answering them. So, uh, Kearney, you're running for president. If your plan is implemented, you'd involve us uh, back in Afghanistan. Another 20 years of war there. Can you please justify that? Well, before I answer that, I would just like to say, Go Bulldogs! Woo! Yeah! Man, it's good to be back in Fresno. Yeah. <laughs> And that's literally what the game is. You have distract cards where you're like, go fill in local sports team. <laughs> um, you know, I think that's an outstanding question. Now, let me tell you a story about my childhood. <laughs> when I was in Arkansas last week, I met a little old woman and she told me you were right. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the contender. It's it's a hilarious game if, if you if you enjoy that kind of uh, thing, and it, it it makes it very hard to watch political debates after playing that game because you just see all the different tactics they do, pandering to the local sports uh, teams are you know pop, you know very popular. Like you know, I I love the barbecue here in St. Louis. You know, like they'll <laughs> not answer the question. Let's talk about barbecue instead. All right, um, red herring and non sequitur. Yeah, so a red herring is when you're intentionally distracting, and a non sequitur is a, a a red herring is a non sequitur. It's a form of a non sequitur. Okay, and so any non sequitur is automatically an invalid argument, right? Um, if the logic does not connect, the argument is invalid. You don't have to worry about if it being valid or sound or whatever. It's just invalid. You're done. Okay. So, let's let's play a game. Uh, is this a red herring or a non sequitur? I want you to guess. If I'm a tennis player, I'm a sports player. I am not a tennis player. Therefore, I am not a sports player. What do you think? Red herring or non sequitur? Yeah, this is just a bad, like, people make this logical mistake all the time. Like, you know, if I bring me up my umbrella to school, uh, if, it, if it rains, I bring my umbrella to school. You see me with my umbrella at school, you're like, oh, it must be raining right now. Because it, it, it's just, you know, that's our, our human brains have trouble with affirming the consequent and denying the antecedent. And so, yeah, this doesn't seem deliberate to me. Now, in South Park, which I'm not going to play for copyright strike reasons, there is the Chewbacca defense. I will post the link onto chat and Discord. You can watch it yourself. And uh, it involves Johnny Cochran, who was one of uh, the defense lawyers for O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson was a um, football player who arguably was on trial for murdering his wife. And it was called the trial of the century. I don't know if it was. There's always a lot of trials that are the trial of the century. But he got um, a lot of very high-powered lawyers together, including um, one of the Kardashians, right? And um, one of them actually has a house or had a house kind of kind of near where I live here, actually. And um, the. Uh, South Park episode here uh, parodies Johnny Cochran during the uh, the OJ trial, and if you're too young to remember OJ, it, it's fine. Um, 
most people think that he did it, but he got off. The, the, the jury acquitted him. And so this sort of makes fun of his, of his defense. And so they basically um, say, um, it, it, it's just, it, you, you have to watch it. It's a long st string of non sequitur uh, red herrings, really. If the gloves don't fit, you must acquit. Yeah. So, you know, OJ tries putting the glove on. It doesn't fit. People are like, oh, he didn't. Get, yeah. yeah. But, you know, making a rhyme in a high power defense case of the gloves don't fit. You must acquit. You know, like that kind of stuff. Like yeah. Lance Ito was a judge. Like people still remember all that stuff. Even if they're alive back then. It was a, it was a big deal. Dr. Dr. Seuss, the court. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good way of putting it. Okay, so uh, red, red herring or non sequitur. People like looking at giant sequoias. Houses should have nice things to look at inside of them. Therefore, you should put giant sequoias inside of your house. Red herring or non sequitur. Yeah, I'm, I'm going over to your house. I'm going over to your house, and uh, I'm like, you know what? You need you need a giant sequoia inside of your house. What? Why? Well, people like looking at nice things inside of people's houses, and it, people like looking at, you know, a giant sequoia is nice to look at, therefore you should have a giant sequoia inside of your house. Um, no, I think it's actually a non sequitur also, because, I don't know, it doesn't seem like the person's... Again, this is why I wouldn't put it on the midterm. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's just a, it's a, a logical mistake, because there's lots of nice things that you can put inside your house that aren't giant trees. You know, the logic doesn't work. But, um, yeah, it, it doesn't feel to me like the person's intentionally trying to d distract or anything. Non sequitur. It's a non sequitur. Okay, next one. People say that it was wrong for me to rig the primaries. But what does it mean for something to be wrong? Are there any objective moral systems we can all agree to? If not, then it cannot be said to be wrong. Yeah, I'm not going to put these on the term. So. Yeah, most definitely red herring. Like in this case, uh, I'm sort of channeling uh, Bill Clinton, right? Uh, uh, what, you know, where he was very, you know, much doing. He, he involved a lot of these kind of tactics, you know, in the Monica Lewinsky uh, case. And, and so in this case, they're, they're trying to uh, not only like red herring, but they're actually trying to change the topic of the debate away from, you know, did I rig the primaries or not to like, let's talk about objective moral systems. And, and once we can establish that a moral system that we all agree on, hint, you won't ever find an objective moral system that everyone agrees on. Once we do that, then we can get back to talking about me whether or not I rigged the primaries and whether it was wrong to do so because we have to establish what it means to be wrong before we can even say that what I did was wrong. So quite clearly an attempt, attempt to distract away from uh, the primary rigging to uh, a obscure philosophical debate that has not been resolved in 2600 years and probably won't be resolved in the next 10 minutes. So it's a great tactic by the way. If you want to uh, uh, get people uh, not talking about you and just say, what does it mean for something to be true? You know, now that you've had this class, you go, like, does it, is it because people agree that it's true? You know, <laughs> and you get people all talking about that because it's an interesting question. And then, you know, they're not talking about you anymore. So. Um, yeah. So technically, you know, all of these formal fallacies where the logic doesn't flow, they're all technically non sequiturs. All right, so straw man, how to self defense yourself. Yeah, all of these fallacies you can use for evil as well as good. You know, like if you're going to go into public speaking or public relations or advertising, <laughs> you can use all of these. Straw man is a good one. It, with a straw man argument, what you do is you f you frame your opponent's argument in a way to make it look silly or weak. Okay, so um, 
Very, very common. It's very, it's, it's probably more common than not. I would even say in, in debates where you say well, what the other person's arguing for is, and then you say something ridiculous, some exaggerated version of their, of their claim. And then you argue against that because it's usually very easy to disprove, um, Strawman, Strawman, right? So for example, um, let me pull up Facebook. Uh, let's see how long it takes me to find a straw man on Facebook. Somebody start a timer. Somebody start counting on, uh, <laughs> somebody start counting on, uh, on Discord. Let me see. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Top one here. <laughs> All right. There's one. Uh, uh, all right. That one's actually true. Uh, Yep, and then the fourth one's also straw man. All right, that was pretty easy. All right, so <laughs> number one and number four. Here we go. Okay, so don't forget to tell your surgeon not to wear masks the next time you need an operation because apparently masks are ineffective at protecting his germs. You definitely don't want your surgeon deprived of oxygen. Whether or not this is a straw man depends on exactly who you're talking to because some people do actually believe that masks deprive you of oxygen somehow when they, they don't. Um, but uh, a lot of times the, the mass debate isn't over um, these issues at all. So whether or not this is a straw man really kind of technically depends who you're talking about. But here, uh, yeah, people who believe that today's Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram outage cannot possibly be a coincidence after Sunday's 60 Minutes expose on Facebook do not understand the internet is held together with bubblegum and string. string. An internet, internal outage has nothing to do with the internet and how it communicates is likely a cyber attack and not because the internet is held together with bubblegum and string. Only a twit that doesn't know anything about technology would say such a thing. Laura, grant me the misplaced confidence of a guy who tells the director of cybersecurity at the EFF about cybersecurity with zero evidence or explanation. So. So. Two strawmen. Maybe. Maybe three. I think maybe all three people are probably engaging in strawman here. Okay. It sounds like satire. It's, it's, it's Twitter. It's, uh, Twitter is just, you know, it, it, it's full of ridiculousness. And like I said, like whoever thought Twitter was a good idea is I'd like to meet them and have a beer with them and, and find out why they thought it would be a good idea to be able to put, you know, random people on the internet that disagree with each other in the same, uh, thread where you can yell at famous people, you know? So, Eva here is saying, couldn't possibly be a coincidence. That's really strong. That's really strong. I think most people who are looking at the Facebook out outage were going like, hmm, that's real interesting that Facebook went down uh, right after there was a 60 minutes, you know, thing on. And then also there was testimony in Congress. Like a lot of people are going like, hmm, that's a coincidence. You know, like a lot of people on, on, on here, like if you look at, um, the threads were taking place on, um, what was it, a couple days ago when Facebook went down. You can see a lot of students are like, hmm, that's real, real interesting. And so she's saying it couldn't possibly be a coincidence. I don't know a single person that said it couldn't possibly be a coincidence. That's a well, well stronger way of framing how most people were looking at it, which is just like, huh, that's a, you know, like, hmm, you know, like, you know, it's, I don't know, but it's pretty funny, you know, is how most people I know react to it. And so she's, she's framing this, uh, thing as sort of a, yeah, couldn't possibly be coincidence, which I, I don't think most people are saying, you know, but to be fair for the few people that say it couldn't possibly be a coincidence, like, you know, it's probably right there. It, there, it might've been a coincidence, right? Like, and she is technically right here because arguing against the straw man is very easy. You know, couldn't possibly means it is impossible. So, so these people that she's talking about, which may or may not even exist because she's probably strawmanning them, saying it is impossible for it to be anything but, you know, sabotage or whatever. Okay. And sure, she's absolutely right. If, if somebody's, if somebody told me it is 100% due to sabotage or something like that, I would be like, yo, um, no, these things happen. Like outages do happen occasionally, you know, 
Google goes down, uh, Amazon goes down, probably once a year, uh, something like that. You know, it could just be Facebook's starting to go down, you know? And it, maybe it just was a coincidence. It's like, do, do you understand what I'm getting at here? Like, this is, mm, that is putting the really, really, she's making it way too strong. Why? Because it's easy to argue against. And then this person, note, note, note how this person rewrote her argument. Okay. So he said this was likely a cyber attack. Likely. He didn't say it cannot possibly, right? Do you understand? Do you see the difference here? So she said could not possibly. He said likely. It's a difference. It's a big, that's a world of difference, you know, between 100% confidence and like, over 50% confidence. Like these are two different arguments and these people are talking past each other, right? And, and he's probably framing the world's discussion in a more accurate fashion than she was. Why? Because most people are saying, um, it's a hell of a coincidence. And uh, I don't know, it kind of looks like either sabotage or, or something, you know? And so he, I think, was actually framing the the uh, gestalt of the internet better than she was. And sure, she's director of cybersecurity at EFF. That doesn't change the fact she's straw manning. But because he was responding to her, he was straw manning her position. Because she said couldn't possibly, he said likely. Not the same argument. Not the same argument at all. So he straw manned her straw man of the internet. Happens all the time. Th these qualifiers, these qualifiers where it's like possibly, likely, probably, certainly, all these things are one of the single greatest casualties of Twitter. <laughs> Twitter kills qualifiers. They kill them dead. They take them out back behind the barn like old yeller and shoot them in the head. Qualifiers are the single greatest casualty of internet debates where people will, and this is where the straw man comes from, when somebody says, you know, I would say there's a 10% chance that um, something happened and somebody said, what, you're saying there's a 100% chance that something happens? That's a straw man. Because there's a world of difference between 10% chance and 100% chance. Are you guys with me on this? Subtlety and nuance are casualties of internet conversations. Okay. So, um, why, why, why is your brain a, a nuclear explosion, uh, Brian? Um, yeah, I mean, th 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 this is, this is like, and I, I just pulled this up off Facebook, right? You, you saw me, I just pulled it up right there. So, and this guy, Lord Grant, the misplaced confidence of a guy who tells the director of cybersecurity at the EFF about cybersecurity. Um, he's, is he telling her about cybersecurity? Yeah, I guess only Twitter doesn't know. Yeah, no, okay. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Um, yeah, the, the the internet is a fairly fragile place. Like there, there was a period of time where I could have brought down the internet. Um, the, the internet used to be very, very not secure, and it's gotten better over the years. But like, there's this moment when I was at the bookstore, and I'm reading about how you know the underlying architecture of the internet works, and I'm like, wow, yeah, I could take it out if I wanted to, you know. Uh, things like DNS, the domain name service where um, it translates these names into IP addresses. Mm, yeah, you can you can spoof those. And, and even to this day, like DNS spoofing attacks are still a thing. Uh, it's better now. It's secure DNS and stuff. But man, back in the day, it was like, yeah, um, <laughs> the, the whole Internet's gone down, you know, before. Right. So, um no, I like the internet, dude. I don't take it down. You know, it, it, there's just that moment of like, <laughs> should I? And uh, email, like if you if you realize how easy it was to forge an email, you know, for example, I don't know, let's say hypothetically your roommate is brewing beer in his closet in the dorm room and you hypothetically want to screw with him. You can send him an email from the campus police from a guy that my roommate Harry knew. He said, Harry, you're my friend. 
caught word you're brewing beer in your closet. That is an offense that will not only get you kicked out of the dorms, but also expelled from school. So as your friend, I'm giving you a one-hour warning before I come inspect your, your closet. <laughs> Signed. Campus police officer. I hear screaming from Harry's room. <laughs> is that illegal or is it legal to moonshine? It, it, it was definitely illegal. Uh, UCSD um, had a no alcohol policy on campus, or at least in the dorms, which caused people to drink off campus and go drunk driving. So I don't know if it was a good policy or not, but yeah. So I hear screaming and he's tearing up his closet, you know, trying to get out of the the bag of beer. It wasn't even like a real brewery. It was literally a bag. You put water in and it had the yeast and stuff in it. You just put hot water in it and you just leave the bag in your closet for a couple weeks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was doing him a favor, but now I, I go in there and just kind of watch him like screaming and trying to get all the stuff out before he gets expelled. I'm like, oh man, did you get an email or something? He's like, yeah. How did you know? I'm like, huh? Yeah, weird. Did he say this and this and this? Yeah. How did you know? Oh, well, that's a weird coincidence. I can guess all that, huh? <laughs> we we pulled a lot of practical jokes on each other. So. Uh. Is he moonshining? Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay. And so this part, though, I would say is a straw man. Okay. Zero evidence or explanation. Well, um, the uh, zero explanation, internal, yeah, he has an explanation. He may, he may be wrong, but this person says zero evidence or explanation. And he's saying it, it's an internal outage, not the internet. So. She's saying the internet's held together with bubblegum and string. He's saying it's part of their intranet, not the internet, which is wrong. But, you know, she's wrong about this as well. So kind of like all three people are kind of not being fair to the other person. And that's what I hate about Twitter and Facebook conversations between people that disagree. So you, you rarely get a conversation where people are representing the other person's side. Well, they're almost always represented badly. The other, the other team is framed in such a way to make them look like morons. You go from like, I think it's possible that the Facebook outage was due to sabotage. And the other person says, what? You're saying it couldn't possibly be a coincidence? No. No, I'm just saying it's possible. <laughs> you know. Strawman is the most common fallacy between people on the internet. Hands in. In a debate. Hands in. Uh, a famous example of this would be Kathy Newman's um, infamous interview with Jordan Peterson. Um, Kathy Newman is a famous BBC reporter. And um, I don't know how much of this I can play without getting copyright striked. But basically, over and over again, she tells Dr. Peterson what he believes. And he's like... No, I don't believe that, you know. So you're saying that girls and uh, that women in corporate, cor female corporate executives should just give up and go home and play with their dollies. And he's like, no, I work with female executives to help them become more confident and ask for raises, you know, like, like, oh, like, and so this is a compilation of just all the times where she says, so what you're saying is, so what you're saying is, so what you're saying is, um, and he's like, no, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not saying that. And it was so bad that like it became like this internet meme a few years back, like four years ago or so. And um, so people call straw manning Kathy Newmaning sometimes because um, it, was, it was just so, so bad. Like her straw manning was just so over the top and egregious that um, it, did, it did the rounds. Okay. Um... Your sister got a new phone, contacted you, and said, if you're not fully vaccinated, you'll be dropped from classes. That's funny. Yeah. So, um, okay. Um, yeah. And so qualifiers, some, none, all, most, possibly, probably, those things are the point at which strawmans occur a lot of the time. 
I think that we should, um, person one, I think that we should cut, uh, I think we should thin out the trees up in the forest near us because we're getting forest fires left and right. And if we thin them out, we'll have less forest fires. Person B, why are you saying you want to clear cut the forests? All right, that's a very common exchange. Somebody says, I think we should cut some of the trees. Person B, why are you saying we should cut all the trees? Because I don't. Because <laughs> I don't. I said some. You, you, changed, you changed it. You changed it from some to all. Okay, straw man. Okay. Yeah, right here. Okay. So, um, in fact, uh, that, that was an actual headline, right? So, Trump wants national force to become clear cut. Um, ad hominem. Okay. Ad hominem is a misunderstood fallacy. A lot of times people will say that's an ad hominem when you like insult them. Like, yeah, you're dumb. Like, people would be like, that's an ad hominem. Mm -mm. Nope. It's Latin, so good on you for that. You know, we got our ad populum and our ad vercundium, you know, all these fancy. Fancy pants Latin names for, for fallacies. But insulting people is not ad hominem. It's not. It's just an insult. It's a personal attack. You shouldn't do it if you're in a debate, but yeah. And Twitter, like it's just people just attack each other. You know? uh, what ad hominem is, is when you say the argument is wrong because of who you are. Right? So you're not attacking with ad hominem with uh, with ad hominem you're not attacking the argument you're attacking the person giving the argument. Okay, yeah, do you understand? Which is a non sequitur, right? Like, you know, even even Hitler, you know, drank water. That doesn't mean drinking water is wrong. You know what I mean? So Hitler was a vegetarian. Yeah, Hitler loved animals. And he was a vegetarian. He believed in gun control. Like, if you know, and and so, you know, the the left wing tends to invoke Hitler, you know, on the right wing. But the right wing also invokes Hitler on the left wing. You know, who else supports vegetarianism? Hitler. You know, so um, ad hominem has nothing to do with whether or not vegetarianism is an ethical duty or not. Okay. Uh, socialism is a dangerous political and economic system that leads to tyranny. Well, that's only that's the kind of thing that a reactionary fascist bougie would say, you know. Didn't didn't answer the claim. Didn't respond to the claim. You're attacking the person. Okay. Also, very common. Where like uh, you know, if you criticize uh, Marxism, diehard Marxists oftentimes just can't answer a criticism, you know, and so they'll change the topic to you, you know. You know, you're going to be first up against the wall when the revolution comes, you know. Uh, is this quiz going to be like the last quiz where the two terms are almost the same on the same question? I don't know. Do you want there to be? I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a bunch of yeses on chat, so if I can get some more yeses, then... See, I'm straw manning. Straw man policy. Yep, every, everyone on everyone on Discord is uh, saying yes. So. <laughs> see, do you see how annoying it is? By the way, like when when you say something and somebody says, "Well, what you're actually saying is," yep, Thalia just said, "Yeah, make the quiz all the same kinds of questions. They're all non sequiturs and." <laughs> Right? It's super annoying. It's super annoying when somebody strawmans you. And um, and that's one of the reasons why people get mad on Twitter threads, because people strawman all the time. And then people get mad. That's not what I said. Yeah. So, uh, hack his account, find my IP address. <laughs> uh, no, no. I'll, I'll be nice this time. I'll be nice this time. Okay. And so, last one. Uh, this is a, um, a form of ad hominem. And the form of ad hominem is, well, you do it also. That's what tu quoquo means. Tu quoquo means you too. You're doing the same thing. So uh, there's actually a, 
a Wikipedia page for this because it was the USSR did to quote what so many times like the US would criticize you know the USSR sending people to the gulags you know and and like you know all these like horrible civil rights abuses in the USSR and the USSR would be like well the US has civil rights abuses also which back in the day was absolutely true doesn't excuse your bad behavior though right it's a distraction, so it's technically a form of red herring, you know. Um, you'll you'll sometimes hear this called the pot calling the kettle black, right? So, hey, you're black. Well, you're black too. You know, it's a two quote quote. You know, doesn't answer the doesn't answer the issue. I think you should do your homework. Well, you haven't done your homework, so why should I if you haven't done it? Okay. It's ad hominem, right? It's, there's a claim made, I should do my homework, and I responded to it by attacking you. So it's a form of ad hominem. And it's also a red herring, because whether or not you did your homework has nothing to do with if I should do my homework. Like, you might be able to do the homework in five minutes. And it takes me all night to do it, you know? So he's saying we shouldn't do our homework. <laughs> Kerninus Prime was no joke. <laughs> no, it had nothing to do with my technical skills. It just had to do with the fact that the internet was not designed for being the internet. <laughs> like the internet was designed when you knew the people on the internet. Like I can show you a map of the internet from the seventies. They have all of the hosts. They have the whole internet on a page. UCLA is connected to UCSD, which is connected to Rand Corporation, which, you know, there's an inner sea link to Hawaii. And like, they, and, and if there's a problem, you just called up your friend in Hawaii. You're like, yo, why are you spamming? What? There's somebody on your network that is sending out advertisements for macadamia nuts. Why are you... Sp oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, well, I, I know who that is. It, he doesn't know the rule for the internet, because the rule for the internet back then was no advertising. It was an unofficial rule. It would have been really nice if it was a, a real rule. And you would just call them up, and they would, like, you know, take care of it on their side. The internet was not designed for what we have now. It sort of became it. <clears throat> wasn't supposed to be so yeah uh so two quokwa um very common as well all right so we got what three left all right so we'll then we'll be done with fallacies on friday and then we'll pick up social social issues in computer science next week okay so there are a lot of fallacies there is a cheat sheet for fallacies on the files section in Canvas. So if you want to help keep them all straight, there's a file that has all of them in there. Why haven't you cleaned your room? Well, you haven't cleaned your room either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll do one more day of fallacies and then we'll switch out of critical thinking for a while and into, uh, and into social issues next week. All right, so thanks everyone for coming out. Hope you had a good time. All, and because you all asked me to what make all of the quiz questions very similar, right? I'll, I'll be sure to do that. You got it. <laughs> all right. See y'all. Bro. <laughs> Strawman. Strawman fallacy. <laughs> <laughs>